See a little four wide action. Crazy out of the trial. Oh, Sorry, he's coming up. And the leave under the racket. Three by three. Three D. At the flag stand, side by side by side. It's going to be Jason Mains winning at Talladega. Hello, everybody. Welcome into PGR Esports Live with the Intimidator Super Speedway Series. Getting ready for race two with the return of the series. And tonight, we're in a different car than what we're used to seeing. We're in the Arkham and Art Series, but we are back at the home track, Talladega Super Speedway. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You are watching Austin Green on PGR Esports. Drivers just getting qualifying finished up. That means they're getting lined up, getting ready to roll, and getting ready to get this thing going here tonight. Let's get right into it with your starting group taking the pole. It's going to be one of the Dale Cup drivers making our turn here tonight. That is Vicente Guerrero in the 14 car. Rolling off on his outside will be Kevin Freeze in the 48. Back in that third position is going to be John Ward with Tony Cox, or excuse me, Third position, John Ward. Fourth, Tony Cox. Wow, great effort qualifying-wise for Tony Cox. He might have a shot at a win here tonight with an effort like that. Back in fifth, we'll start Garrett Maines, Matt Lee in sixth. Mark Math in seventh, Matthew Baker in eighth. Dustin Crothers ninth, and Trevor Osronoff rounding out your top ten. Back in row number six, starting on the inside, it's going to be Cody Nagels for Dale Cup. And on his outside, it'll be David Sheets from McCullough Motorsports. William Ransone back in 13th. Andrew Navarro, the road to pro driver, in 14th. Zach Range, 15th. Jeff Merck in 16th, Todd Macy 17th, Jason Maines in 18th, and it's John Mullahan and David Drohan rounding out your top 20. Ron Morris Jr. in 21st, Nathan Rostical in 22nd, Ryan Based for KSR 23rd, Tucker McClendon for Blind Score Racing in 24th. Kenneth Stamper, the captain for KSR, making a return here tonight. He will roll off 25th, Chad Ross to his outside in 26th. Making up row number 14, Sierra Clampert in 27th, John Herda in 28th. Dylan Jones, 29th, and Logan York rounding out your top 30. Michael Triscaro, series owner. I believe he might be doing a little bit of both here tonight, but as it shows right now, he will roll off 31st. J.R. Miller in 32nd. Brock Westmoreland in 33rd. Mike Davenport, 34th. Christopher McCullough in 35th. Christopher Carter, he makes a return tonight as well. In that 41 car, he will roll off in 36th. Ken McCullough Jr., 37th. Tyler Vickery in 38th. Mark Wondell back in 39th. And it's going to be Jimmy Emos. Rounding out your top 40. Nash Brabilla rolls off 41st. And the last car starting the field tonight will be Danny Efsman 
He rolls off in a 40-second. Looking at your race info, we are back in the Arkham and Art Series. 55 laps going to be the scheduled distance here tonight. Everybody does have 100% fuel, about 18 point, not sure the exact decimal place, but just about 19 gallons worth of fuel, we believe. Unlimited tires, no fast repair, fixed setups as always, and three green-white checkers. Talladega Super Speedway, 2.65 miles in total distance. High banking in the corners, well over 30 degrees. Long straightaways, you're going to see a lot of bump drafted, a lot of pushing, and a lot of three, maybe even some four-wide action. 125 degrees starting track temp tonight so let me tell you it's gonna be hot it's gonna be slick out there and everybody's gonna try to keep their composure here to this first round of pit stops so with all that in mind we will get this thing ready to get going and i do want to make a stop of course you always give a tip of the cap to everybody in the top five in terms of qualifying effort but i mean you really got to hand it to the job that tony cox did again this is one of the drivers that we see a lot in the series and of course we're usually in the trucks or the xfinity cars so you know, to come here and do something a little different tonight and see a stellar qualifying effort like that, I think that's probably a pretty good sign for the driver out of Alexandria, Indiana, that again, this could certainly be his first chance to get a win here in the PGR Esports Series or to get one of the chances that he's already had before to cash and maybe see if he can't do it again here tonight. So we keep an eye on him along with many others as we get rolling. No Matthew Baker tonight. He is down in the field. And so that means we will be solo in the booth unless Dawson's able to get up here at some point. With that, here we go. Rolling up into the Geico Restart Zone for the first time here tonight. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Talladega. Lap one in the books, and it is going to go to the 92 machine of John Ward. Rolling the outside, and he's got a good amount of help right now. In fact, from the 48, that's Kevin Freeze. Again, different car tonight, and the paint scheme's going along with that. Much different than what we're used to seeing from most of these guys. But Garrett Means, familiar-looking livery for him. You see pushing second on the inside right now. And now the big thing that we're going to be talking about all night, and I'm sure when we see a couple different accidents, one of them will be because of this is the pushing. It's very, very different in these cars. The biggest thing is that you cannot push in the corners. It just doesn't work. And we'll actually hop on board here real quick with, well, it's normally our co-host in the booth, Matthew Baker. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Notice here, through the trial and then through three and four there, he's not pushing on the back bumper of Kevin Freeze. It's not because he can't. It's because he knows that if he does, that's going to get Kevin turned around and cause a pretty big accident. Now, so he runs as close as he can through the corner that still gives a good arrow push and then it's once you get down the straightaway you get the guy lined up that's when you push just about as hard as you can now notice what he does right here cools off a little bit and he lines him up on the left side of the bumper interestingly enough if we actually go to a rear chase view here and show you what the front of these cars look like in fact i'll see if i can go to either a nose cam i'll try the rear chase first and yeah i don't quite like the way that shows it so we're going to go to the nose view here or rather the gearbox and look at the nose here of vicente guerrero and Notice how ramped up that front bumper is. It's almost when you try to push the guy in front of you, you kind of wedge his car in the air, and that's why you got to be so delicate with the pushes. As soon as you get those back tires lifted off the ground, it's pretty much over. That guy's not going to be able to save it. So once you get linked up, you can push. But in terms of actually getting that connection in the bump draft, avoid it in the corners and make it a smooth one on the straightaways. But over 200 miles an hour that time as they entered into turn number one, 198 entering the back stretch. So again, higher speeds tonight. And also, tire wear is going to be an issue as we start to see three wide now. Well, on the outside, it's the 60 car of Jeff Merck. Looks like he's getting a little bit of help here early. That's Andrew Navarro in the 16. Different looking paint scheme for him tonight as well. But tire wear, it's, it's going to be an issue. I mean, these cars already have a problem with it in general. But you get on a hot track like this, by the end of a run, these things are going to be struggling to climb the hill without having to at least let off the throttle slightly. So 
I think that inside will fade maybe a little bit as this run goes on, but if you got the right pushers down there, it's a pretty good shot that it will stay strong all the way through this entire race. Trevor Osronoff right now has a pretty good run going. He is in eighth, already up two positions from where he started this race at. One of the KSR drivers seems sitting in the middle of three wide right now. These cars get a lot more darty as well, so just trying to hold a nice steady line and push Matthew Baker. Two jobs at once, not an easy task for Trevor Osronoff, but doing a pretty good job of it right now. And just a couple rows ahead of him, and now poking out to the lead, it's going to be Jeff Merck in the 60. Where we saw Navarro very aggressive on the back bumper, getting into three, cools off a little bit through four. And now he's going to line it back up, try to give him another shot down the straightaway. And then last, but certainly not least, the man who had, well, in my opinion, the best qualifying effort we've seen all, or excuse me, from him since we saw him here at PGR Esports, Tony Cox. Definitely been figuring something out. And the speed, I know maybe not translating here early, but this is by design. Again, we're at a super speedway with no fast repairs. So I think Tony Cox was more than okay right here with just dropping back, playing it safe. He knows he can get back up there when he wants to. And so right now, Tony Cox, again, currently back a couple handfuls of position from where he started in fact now he's faded all the way back to 23rd down 19 from that great fourth place qualifying effort all right as we head back towards the front of the field john ward still being scored as your leader on the inside and the other thing we haven't seen a lot of at least not yet has been a lot of lane controlling ward has been sitting pretty comfortable on the bottom of the racetrack hasn't had to really make any moves up in front of that 48 just yet I think that's part of what's starting to cause that gridlock formation that we're seeing as they cross the stripe. Because again, each lane has momentum until the driver that's the lead pusher, if you will, the first guy behind the leader, starts to get hot. You saw that right there with Matthew Baker. He had to back it down, and whenever you have to back it down like that, that lane starts to fade, gives one of the other lanes a chance to surge. And so with nobody changing lanes, eventually all three of those lead pushers, Vicente Guerrero, Matthew Baker, and Andrew Navarro, they're going to start to get hot, and they got to keep those temps cool. Best way to do it, back off, get some air to the nose, maybe duck out of line. You see Navarro doing so by ducking out to the right of Jeff Merck. Again, that's not him making a move, just trying to cool off those engine temps so he can push him again down the straightaway. So far, so good, though. Three by three. Now we're going to see a move from the five of Matthew Baker. Talked about need needing a shuffling of temps. They're going to get one right here. The five might go to the lead here. He does as they cross the stripe. Not quite enough to get clear here. Doesn't look like... Man, Merck gave him a big push off into turn one, but Osronoff was able to hold the 48 of freeze still at bay. And so now Merck's going to line him up. They're going to have to get it here. I think if they don't, we're going to be right back to phase one where that outside just starts to stall. Merck trying to get a pull on the back bumper. Can't do it. Now he does get there. And boy, this shows you another really good angle of those kind of ramp noses, if you will, wedge noses. And man, oh man, it's going to be really tricky here late as the pushing gets more aggressive, but nobody pushing in the corners at all right now. Which is not, of course, what we're used to seeing when we're here in the trucks or the Xfinity cars. 3x3 three three into the tribal. Still beautiful looking formation. Great racing that we've had on the track so far tonight. Well, we've got everybody up front. Keeping things pretty calm, cool, collected. Baker with a big side draft. Here we go. The five's going to get cleared down into turn one. Jumps to the middle. We'll see if he goes all the way down. Sure enough, he does. So Matthew Baker now first time to the lead here tonight. I think you're going to see him sit down here for a little while or, well, Maybe on the contrary to that, wouldn't be shocked if he does decide to jump up. Maybe try to experiment a little bit here early. See if control of lanes works, but doesn't seem like he's too keen to do that right now. He's going to stay on the bottom with John Ward. He knows he's got fresh temps. Jeff Merck now with a chance to cool off as it lines up Andrew Navarro to be his lead pusher yet again. Got a couple other guys now starting to make their way up towards the front of the field. Jason Maines being one of them. You see right now Jason currently rolling on that outside, trying to see if he can maybe make something work. Just on his inside, there's the Team 3 captain, Chad Rosses. Another one of the Jimmy Johnson paint schemes, but a different driver. It's William Ransone, Mark Math on his inside, Ron Morris Jr., who actually, of course, got the win. And the Monday night Dega Pro special event that they put on, it was a little bit of a, almost a warm-up to the Big Dog, Little Dog series that we see from a call of motorsports racing, and money racing, rather, and got the job done over there, of course, in the trucks. And now looking to see if he can maybe go back-to-back -back with a win here tonight in PGR and the ARCA cars. Well, I know we've taken a lot of onboard views. We haven't actually looked at the cockpit for any of these drivers just yet. So I want to do that now. And we already know what it's like to look like leading here at Talladega. But there is the pushing. See these cars looking much different than, again, what we're used to seeing. A couple more gauges. And overall, just an older style car. I mean, these have been around in iRacing for some time. While we know the Arca model in real life got an update, these cars have not. Still makes them a ton of fun, though, at these super speedways. You see that curved spoiler. 
And then also those water temps, especially on these cars, they get hot and they're a lot harder to cool down sometimes. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Man, what a push that was, though, from Kevin Freeze to get Matthew Baker back clear of the bottom. And that was the first chance that we really had to see somebody control lanes. And it seemed like it worked out pretty well. Oh, what a little hard. Mark Matt further back. Caution is out as the 99. Back up the track into Tony Cox. He goes. The 72 has damage. Pretty significant damage at that. Oh, man, it looked like he was going to be okay. Then you saw the 199 come back up the track. Maybe it had broken suspension by then. And... It was on from there, just nothing that Tony Cox could do. And as for Mark Math, that car is pretty banged up on both sides, including the rear. So again, no fast repairs, whatever damage these two drivers sustain, this is gonna be a manual fix. Now Mark Math definitely has it worse. In fact, you see that right front splitter lifted pretty high off the ground. Don't want that here at the super speedways. Let's keep the car planted on the track, keep the speeds higher, but I'm not gonna be getting that right now. All right, here we go. Let's back this up and see what cause here of your first caution night it was on the back stretch towards kind of the middle of this lead draft just behind all the three wide action normally where you'd expect things to you know, maybe be on the calmer end excuse me the calmer end but just not the case right here so here we go we're gonna go to the blimp cam first in fact actually we'll go to the chopper watch mark math that's dylan jones in the 24 26 rather just behind him and oh it's a checkup it's exactly what it is it's just a bit of a checkup there on the inside how does this spark up here there's a little bit of a checkup Damn, more than a checkup. It's just Mark Math has a run, and he has to check up. Right before he got there, I think Base had to check up a little bit as well. You know, Jones is running close here, trying to keep everybody pretty tight. Well, you know, I take that back. Even Jones wasn't that close. It's just the speed difference there is so great when you're going 200 miles an hour, a little bit of a brake check. And that's the result there. Dylan Jones couldn't quite get on the brakes quick enough. Gets into the 199 as he goes across the track. William Ransone tags him, gets him up in the air a little bit. And then Mark Math slams into that outside wall. Back down into David Sheets. Kenneth Stamper. Didn't see these two initially in it. They might have even got one more there. And then at this point, again, you're assuming that maybe the suspension's broke on the 199 or whatever the deal was. But gets back up into the 72 of Tony Cox and gives him some big damage that didn't look like he was otherwise going to have a moment ago. Let's hop on an onboard view here real quick with Mark Math. Watch this checkup from his, his windshield and then the corresponding wreck. And you hear it there, right? It's just those back tires getting lifted off the ground. And once those RPMs start spinning, all you can do is hold on. And you saw this wheel right here that there was just nothing he could do. Watch when he turns it back to left here. He's turning it left. He's going to go back straight. A little bit of an overcorrection. And once he turns it back left, I think he may have had still some suspension damage in that. And then, of course, we saw a couple of others get involved in this one as well, including Kenneth Stamper for KSR and a couple of others. See how bad they fared out of this trying to dive to the inside here initially they all do but it's when david sheets gets tagged he comes down gets into kenneth stamper that sends stamper towards the inside wall boom big shot with the left side is wow what a save by the 26 i don't think he hit the wall I'm trying to figure out exactly who that was that was a phenomenal save man oh man let's see if we can get a gearbox view here real quick again i'm not sure who this was was that danny eshelman maybe no and man, I just cannot get over how good of a save this one was right here. I mean, this was basically a wreck that initially looked like it was only collecting two. And when they came down, I don't think anybody else would be able to miss this. But was it potentially John Herta here? Yeah, that's exactly who it's going to be. Watch the 26 here. Dives to the inside. He's going to get tagged in the process. But watch how he keeps this off the wall. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, just maybe a scratch on the paint. But that is it. And that is so hard to do. When you're sideways like that at that speed, man, that was fantastic stuff there from John Herta. Give you one more look at this incident here from the entrance. Turn number three. All right, so as we go back live and get ready to see the green flag... For the first restart of the night, it is John Ward being scored as your leader. Trevor Osnoth in second, Jeff Merck back in third, Matthew Baker in fourth with Jeff, or excuse me, Kevin Freeze in fifth, Garrett Maines in sixth, William Ransone back in seventh, Ryan Based in eighth, and Genevieve ninth, and Zach Range currently rounding out your top ten for the moment. Range, by the way, up five positions from where he started. Just on his inside there, it's going to be John Mullahan, it looks like.
And, you know, I'm wondering here, I had this mixed up, and I apologize. I accused that of being Dylan Jones. Again, I'm used to the paint scheme so much. That was not Dylan Jones who got into the back of Mark Matt. That was actually John Mullahan, the driver out of Cross Lanes, West Virginia. There's Dylan Jones. And, well, numerically the 37, but paint scheme-wise, looks like is he still going eh, pretty pretty bland paint scheme. He's got a little bit more color than what we see in, of course, the Xfinity series. But point being, again, apologize, that was not Dylan Jones. It was John Mullahan. Doesn't seem to have suffered much, if any, damage from that contact. So with this caution here, changes a couple things up. Not too much in terms of where everybody was at, but it, of course, did draw the field out for that first pit stop of the night which a lot of guys maybe were expecting under green, but with it coming under yellow, going to be able to make it a bit farther on fuel now. However, I don't believe you can quite make it all the way, although it might be pretty close at this point. I think if we get a caution at any point from here on out, everybody will be good to go. But, yeah, I'm not sure if they quite have enough in the tank at this point. Now, nonetheless, if they're close, you got to wonder who saves and who stays aggressive. I think if you're up here in the top ten, you got to stay aggressive, but... If you're further back and maybe waiting to still see the big one here tonight, maybe you chill out, drop a little bit further to the back and wait this one out. Pace car makes a left turn down to the pits. It's going to be 15 laps complete when we take the green flag here. Quick acknowledgement. Good to see everybody out in the chat. We appreciate you guys being out here and watching. Looks like that guy, Suvi Baker's mom, run the Empire. And Sean Corbett, hope you all are having a good Thursday night. Back into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air at Talladega. Great restart from John Ward. Problem was not the case for Jeff Merck as that inside is all sorts of separated. Now Kevin Freeze, he'll bail up to the top lane. That opens it up to William Ransone as the next car on the inside to be there with the help. Problem is that outside is so organized and so lined up, they are going to be rolling here on the back. And I don't think that there's anything Merck can do here. He's going to have to get to the back of Ward, push for all he's worth, and it's just not even going to be enough. I mean, look at the run on the outside. Trevor Osronoff will take the lead down the back with a push from Matthew Baker. Garrett Maines testing the water there a little bit. Looks like three-car tandem down the back. That'll get Osronoff clear. Baker was clear as well. Chose not to jump down. He's going to stay up top, and he wants the lead out of turn four. Still two by two. Nobody taking it three wide yet. In fact, I think the energy. Oh, man. Osbornoth, what a save. Boy, he got kicked out of shape right there. Coming into the trialable, and somehow he was able to hold on. Problem is that causes a big checkup as now Matthew Baker, Garrett Maines up front with a little bit of a split decision. Baker, I think, was trying to go down to cover it. Problem was that Garrett and Freeze had it orchestrated, made the run, and now that they get up front, looks like the time for lane controlling is on here. As Garrett jumps up to the top, that places Freeze on the bottom. It's going to be all about who can get either that third lane working first or if one of these two lanes can get their guy clear, which Matthew Baker is going to do right here. Garrett Maines will gladly take that opportunity to jump right back down to the bottom in front of his teammate, Kevin Freeze. That leaves Jeff Merck stranded a little bit of on an island right now as he still is waiting for some help here. Looks like Ryan Bates will be the next man up to give it to him as man almost got into the door right there of Zach Range, maybe even did. Looks like Ryan Bates still up there and still content with trying to give him a push but you can get a have to have more than two cars middle's not really in a much better position though i mean from what we see at the moment only four cars working that second lane two up top with a potential third on the way but definitely the inside the place that's been rolling the best it seems like so far here tonight or at least the safest bet as further back single file line has formed up and along with that single file line we've got a lot of people here who have lost the pack already and it looks like it actually starts here with Tony Cox. Doesn't look like, unfortunately, he was able to get a lot of that damage. Starts actually further up than where he is. Vicente Guerrero is right on the edge of losing this lead draft here. He's got to be careful. I think he'll be fine here. Tucker McClendon in 35th for blind score racing. There's Tony Cox, as we mentioned, with the damage back in 36th. Jimmy Emos in 37th. Danny Esterman 38th. Mark Math in 39th. You got Kenneth Stamper still in the pits with David Sheets. That's due to their damage. Now, Michael Triscaro did not start the race, so that confirms any suspicion we had that he is indeed up in the tower, acting as race control here tonight. Freeze jumps back up. That gives Ward and Osronoff a big surge on the bottom. And Sean Ward looks like they're for a second, got to Trevor Spumper a little bit early. Always gets you nervous off the corners and off the trial. It's the sketchiest parts of this entire racetrack. That's where the car unloads. You're coming off that 30 degrees of banking onto zero degrees of banking. And it always, again, gets you a little bit jumpy, especially as a driver when you feel that first push as you're getting connected. 
That wheel spins around a little bit, and tell you what, Alteroth, he may be the leader, but his job is by no means easy. In fact, let's hop on board with him right here. And watch his hands, both in the virtual car and in the real-life cockpit here. And as he gets in the corner here, doesn't have to worry about too much here, just trying to hold a nice, steady line on the inside of the racetrack. Does have Matthew Baker pinching him pretty tight, looking for a side draft, so he wraps the bottom. That's where it gets really tight on exit, and that's another part of the issue is you're putting so much wheel to the left because car doesn't want to turn. And, man, part of that issue right there has allowed that top and middle to roll. Clear by plenty goes Matthew Baker. Jeff Merck frees as well. He'll beat Matthew Baker to the punches. He jumps to the bottom of the racetrack. And just like that, man, Trevor Osmanoth looking great from the lead. Not sure if Ward got hotter again if they just couldn't get lined up or get the help. But now he quickly fades back to second. Ryan based up top, delivering the push for as long as he could to Jeff Merck. And finally, those two are able to get enough momentum. I think it was because they may have gotten a little bit more help finally. But from Christopher Carter, one of the new drivers who, again, well, not new to the money racing scene. We haven't seen him around in a while. Pops up on some of the broadcasts and... Tonight we see him popping up in the race, and he's got a great run going at that. He's currently in fifth, up 31 positions from where he started. Now we know Christopher Carter has got plenty of talent when it comes to the super speedway style of racing. Problem is, I don't know if he's got any teammates here tonight. So crucial at a track like Talladega. Good news is, I think with these cars, you can rely a little bit less on your teammate because the pushing is a lot more delicate. The runs can be a lot greater, a lot harder to stop, if you will. And you can't just throw a late block. These cars will not take that late block well. You will get yourself turned around. So I think everybody's going to have to make sure they think about that towards the end of this race. As you know, I know that everybody wants to go for that win, especially guys maybe looking for their first win. But there's a lot of money given out for just finishing in the top six here tonight. You certainly hate to see somebody throw that away with maybe just a little bit too aggressive of a move. Still three by three, rocking it down the Alabama gang backstretch. Here at Talladega, the Real Life Cup Series, of course, going to be making our turn here, not this weekend, but next weekend. These guys all getting a little bit of a pre-race warm-up to that. Quarter two, of course, for PGR Esports. A lot of exciting events for this track, Daytona, and a couple others as well. But again, first time that we've been in the ARCA car at a track like Talladega Super Speedway, at least here in PGR Esports. And for a car that really I thought everybody would have to kind of get a feel for right out of the gate. That has not been the case. These guys have adjusted really quickly, making great progress. Everybody looks stable. Everybody looks fast tonight. But the big question is going to be when that first round of green flag stops come by, if we need one here, can everybody make that one clean? Heard some of the complaints in practice being how hard these cars are to get slowed down under braking. And, of course, the way that they start to drive under braking as well. Putting a lot of weight on the front nose. Sometimes cars can bottom out a little bit. Other issues, oh, man, the 41, Chris Carter. Saw him get down the racetrack a little bit there from the top groove. Here remains down there. If they make contact, that could not end well either. But, you know, when you're door-to-door -door like this at about 200 miles an hour, you know there's going to be a little bit of movement. And that's kind of that risk versus reward ratio that you run when you decide either you're going to give a guy maybe a quarter of a lane, half a lane, or you're going to try to pinch it on his door to get a side draft, which could ultimately help you out as well. Baker gets clear into one. Jeff Merck with a big push. Ooh, stacking up on the outside or the middle, rather. The stack up looks like it's going to finally start to die out right around Dylan Jones and Andrew Navarro. It got really, really dicey for a moment. I didn't think that was going to end as well as it did. And so while we are still through wide, almost maybe a little bit of the opposite of what we expected as this run got late to go. And I thought it would just be riding around the top or anybody on the top rather would dominate. But that's not been the case. The bottom here has shown plenty of speed as well. Now, granted, that's partly due to the pushing from Kevin Fries in the 48. Now he's going to jump up top. Ryan Bates will line him up for a push as Jeff Merck splits out three wide with Garrett Maines. Who's going to win the battle to the bumper here? John Ward actually jumps up a lane. That's going to hurt the outside, help the middle. Jeff Merck, though, with a big enough push from Garrett to get nah, not quite clear. Boy, it was a matter of probably about half a foot or so into turn one, but Jeff wasn't clear. Oh, man, Ryan Bates. Look like maybe he's considering experimenting with pushing in the corner. I don't think that's going to work. Tony Cox coming out of the pits. Base trying to give him a push. He's getting him offset right again. That is a big no-no in these cars as well. You can afford to hit a guy center, or more preferably offset left. Ooh, man, he's still out of shape. A lot of fish tail, and they're going to wreck. Two around, make it four. Big one in turn three and four. One car up on the fence. It's Jason Maines in the 12. Jason Maines flips back onto all four after riding along the safer barrier. 
multiple others involved. William Ransone, Cody Nagel's coming out of the grass. You just you started to almost kind of have a sense that it was coming soon. I mean, they just started getting out of shape. You could tell the tires were starting to feel it. Drivers were starting to get more and more antsy. And man, oh man, I think it may have started with a little bit of a wiggle from Ryan Based. Well, here we go. We're going to find out. You already see in that view that the 73 is down the racetrack. That was all a push that he was trying to give Kevin Freeze. We talked about being that little bit offset right and how it can kind of throw you off as a driver here. And yeah, this might be a little teammate on teammate action here. And so watch how this all starts. There's a couple different things that happen here. The first one is, of course, the 73 at base gets Freeze with this bit of an offset push right here. Yeah, it's actually kind of hard to tell there if he's quite on his bumper. Again, these noses a little pointed. Yeah, I think he is here. And I think he's just... I think he's getting Freeze just a little bit offset to the right. That's what I think sends Freeze down the racetrack. Freeze holds it together here, but then you see Base gets down the track. I'm assuming, of course, trying to line back up. Or, well, actually, the 41 was coming down a little bit himself. So Base may be trying to duck down to avoid that. No contact from out back, but he does get into his KSR teammate, Trevor Oswinoff. And that's what's going to really spark this whole thing up. The wreck's going to be on from here. William Ransone, first man to get involved here as they're trying to check up, but just nothing you can do when you've got a car that slow still on the racing surface. And that transition there, boy, Oswinoth was so close to being able to get it all the way down, but just couldn't quite do it. All right, so here we go. Watch this from TV3 here. As Oswinoth starts to slide, the 17's checking up. John Mullahan trying to do the same, but just way too much of a checkup at that point. 26 runs into the back of the 17. He clips Jason Mains. That sends Mains up the track, who gets all four tires up in the air. Actually leaps almost over the 17 of William Ransone as they pile up big time behind. That's the 54 of Todd Macy, I believe. Dylan Jones. There you see the 24. Looks like the 02, the 10, Dustin Carruthers, Mike Davenport. 88 was in it as well. I mean, this was definitely the big one here pretty early on, too, so... No fast fares. This one could bring the night to an end for a couple people, as you saw the seven there piling in at the end. That might have been Danny Barnes. And again, if I get any names wrong just based off of looking here tonight, I certainly do apologize. Again, I don't have, or we're not, or we're not used to seeing rather these paint schemes for these guys. Used to them running, of course, their normal schemes. So, nonetheless, that may not have been Danny Barnes actually. I'm trying to see here if we got any more info on some of the people that were potentially involved in that and. In here, I don't see Danny Barnes on the list, so I'm thinking there's a good chance that was not him, and maybe one of the drivers just running a different scheme here tonight. So I don't think that I'm not sure if Barnes is even in the field here. Nonetheless, we're gonna go back and take a couple more views of this one here, and especially at the wild ride endured by Jason Maines in the 12. I have a good feeling that this ride was gonna be his last one tonight. It's no fast fares. This car is junk. Watch it from the cockpit view. Turns around. Oh, man, he might even catch a little bit of neck code, in fact, there from Dylan Jones as he got turned. So he's trying to make it around, and then here you see he's just trying everything. Turning the wheel open, maybe those tires just clip the concrete and flipping back over finally does, but damage had been done at that point. And now, look at this here from a couple of different angles. Watch Jason Mains here. Let's see if there's a little bit of neck code off of Dylan that sends Mains around here. Or does he actually get... Yeah, it is. Man, that's brutal. He was going to shoot the gap, I believe, but... Once that happened, of course, he certainly wasn't. And there's the ride as he does actually clip the catch fence a little bit. And then... Oh, similar to what we saw, I think it was Martin Truex do back at Bristol way back years ago. He was in the 8 car. Give you one final angle of this one here. We're going to take this here from the Turn 3 wall cam. Here we go. All right, so as we go back live, get ready for the green flag. 27 of 55 now complete, and that should mean everybody's good to go on fuel. It's going to be a battle all the way to the finish now. No green flag stops, at least no longer expected. And it is Ron Morris Jr. lining up as the leader. Christopher Carter in second. Jeff Merck third. Matthew Baker back in fourth. Trevor Osernoth in fifth. Zach Grange sixth. Garrett Maines in seventh. Kevin Fries in eighth with David Drohan ninth. And John Ward Rounding out your top 10. Well, this is going to get really interesting here in terms of how many more cautions we get because at this point and just any point in general at a super speedway, when you're good to go on fuel, it becomes a track position race. 
And any caution you get, normally, you'd be saying to yourself, absolutely no question, I'm not pitting here unless I have damage. However, with these cars, and the way tires wear out, and how tricky they start to get to handle as a run goes on, you gotta wonder, is there anybody in this field here, at least inside maybe the top 20, that decides to go in and take tires if we get another caution, maybe a late caution? Or do they all stay out? Again, not sure how much of an advantage tires would give you in terms of pushing, but in terms of handling through the corners, you know it would certainly help, especially if you were rolling the inside. I just don't know if we're going to see that, though. Track position, I still think, is just too king here. going to be interesting to watch though, the rest of the way. If you're just tuning in, we appreciate you being here. Watching the Intimidator Super Speedway Series for PGR Esports on PGR Esports on a Thursday night. Good time to go money racing. Good, strong field here tonight in the ARCA cars. And we got more to talk about, including what those payouts are looking like. We'll do so here in just a little bit. Officially over halfway as they cross the stripe this time. Christopher Carter at 41. He is up 34 positions. Can he take the lead here? Potentially look to find himself in some money here tonight. Green flag back in the air at Talladega. It's a phenomenal restart from Ron Morris Jr. Again, those same problems we saw in the last restart. Not the case for the rest of the inside. As for the outside here, Matthew Baker quickly up to the back bumper of Christopher Carter. No help from Trevor Osnoff, John Ward, or anybody else back there for the moment. Christopher McCullough in the 31. He's starting to move up. One of the McCullough Motorsports drivers looking for a couple teammates here tonight, which he's going to have to look all the way back to 20th. For Ken McCullough Jr., John Mullahan's in the field as well. But right now up front, it is still all Ron Morris Jr. Those two car tandems were able to hang basically even all the way until one of those two were able to finally get some help. And it looked like it did go pretty even in terms of neither car was able to get help before the other. Off of turn four, though, it is Ron Morris Jr. now with a little bit of a nose in front. Christopher Carter got to be careful. They're going to split him. Oh, my goodness. I think Matthew Baker just cut him probably the biggest and the only break he's going to give him all race. Wow, that was close. Carter started to bobble up. Baker saw it, was going to try to split him. Wow, watch how close this one was from the onboard view here of Matthew Baker. Sees him working up the track. Sees it, sees it. Now he's going to jump to the middle here. Oh, man, that was really, really close. I think Carter got away with one. Baker's going to try it again. Not going to work if Carter tries to cut him off. Oh, my goodness. Baker bails out again. It's almost similar to a battle of chicken right now, but, man, Carter was not clear on that block. The last one was, oh, now they're going to wreck hard into the wall. Goes Ron Morris Jr. Caution is back out. Wrecking big in three and four. John Hurt is in it. Zach Range is in it. And a plethora of other drivers as well. Chad Ross. Looks like, is that Mark Vondell potentially in the 59 as well here? Sure enough, it is. He gets back rolling just behind him. The 02 of Logan York. A lot more damage sustained from this wreck. This will add probably to the tally of drivers that are now out of at least a shot to win this race. As, well, I think we might have an idea of how this one started and it wasn't pretty. All right, here we go. I don't think that it was actually Matthew Baker who ended up causing the wreck. Not what I'm implying, just in case anybody's wondering. But I'm saying that this whole thing's going to start on the back, where basically we should have had the wreck, but somehow we didn't. And watch this. Baker kept trying and trying. He's going to try again here. And as he gets to the inside, he's committed, he's committed, he's committed. i got to be honest. I don't know if the hole was quite there. We're going to have to go to a chopper view to get a little bit of a better insight. The point was, Baker tried it once. He was a little frustrated that... You know, he had to cut a break for Carter the one time, so he says, okay, I'll try it again, and that view's close. Here we go. Watch from the chopper view. Right there, he's there. Yeah, no, Baker's there. I mean, you can argue the hole isn't there from the cockpit view, but Baker's there. Now, at this point, Carter's clear, but it's not really. And, I mean, Baker had to bail right there because he knew what was going to happen. You see Kevin Freeze fire out of the pipes for him as well. And then getting into three here, this is where things kind of fall apart here. As Garrett gets clear, John Ward gets clear as well. Carter gets up to the back bumper here, and ooh, Ward ducks up a little bit, I think just to cool off, and well, as he tries to come back down in line, Carter just tags him in the left rear, and that sends Ward right around, nothing he can do, and X on from here, a lot of guys were able to spin and kind of hold it down by the apron, in fact, looks like Carter and Ward both got away, as did Matthew Baker, but further back, the rest of the field, definitely not nearly as lucky through this one here, let's go back to John Herta, that was one of the cars involved, and it was actually further back from where this wreck started, but it was not far enough in front of him where he was able to miss it. Now, we saw John Ward, of course, collected. I don't think the damage on his car was necessarily race-ending, but 
you know, watch this here from the view of Christopher Carter. This is something that you kind of expect guys to do in terms of the corner. I mean, Wart's got a cool. He's just he's pushing the heck out of Garrett, and as he jumps up here, I just don't really hear Carter lift. If he does, it's a slight burp. It's not enough. And I think that's just one of those things, Christopher. You know, coming back after a little while, one of those things that we see in these cars. But we don't run these cars often, and that's just a little bit of a mistake there on the 41 that costs a lot of guys big time, unfortunately. Matthew Baker, though, watch how he's going to miss this one here as they all go low. Well, it does make a little contact. Morris Jr., though. Man, Ron took a huge, huge shot right there to the outside wall. You saw it initially ripped the front bumper off. And unfortunately, I don't think that's going to so much be fixable. Osronoth, he runs into this as well with nowhere to go. Kevin Fries, you see he's rolling in here. I think he actually avoids this somehow. The 15 is probably going to do the same as he's shooting the gap. And, man, Ron's able to keep it back up in the wall. A nice piece of heads-up driving there by Ron to not collect anybody else. But then here's Chad Ross. Zach Range, John Herta, and multiple others piling in with nowhere to go. Tucker McClendon comes to a stop to miss hitting anybody else at that point. Let's take a couple more angles of this one here. Talked about the hit for Ron Morris Jr. Take an onboard shot. Is this going to be a blindside one, too? He's not expecting anything here. Mind his own business. You hear the tires start to squeal, and... Oh, boy, he certainly tried to save it. Fortunately, nothing he could do. Say so all wrecked below. Was able to get it back going and able to drive off, but it was a really heavy shot, and I just don't know how repairable that damage is going to be. It's all Christopher Carter. Oh, he might have some suspension issues as well after that one. So it ends up going down as... I'm not going to call it the big one, but maybe a second, a little bit smaller. We'll call it the medium one, if you will. The amount of drivers it collects. Man, that was a phenomenal piece of driving there by the 15 as well to shoot the gap. I think that was Brock Westmoreland. Yeah, sure enough, it is. This will actually be our final views. we got to get on board of this one. Watch this. As they wreck in front, Kevin Freeze does a phenomenal job as well. Hoping that the seize part they do. Seize the gap. Splits it. Oh, man, he just barely misses Ron Morris Jr. As a result. That now has him up in that fifth position. Brock Westmoreland, that is. As for the rest of the field, or at least top five, Garrett Maines leads the way. Jeff Burke in second. Kevin Fries in third. Tyler Vickery fourth. And Brock Westmoreland currently rounding out your top five. 24, going to be 23 laps to go. Grab the restart this time. Again, you're just tuning in. Certainly appreciate you being here. Devin Ray joined the chat. Says, in the hold, Trevor Osmanoff. Can Trevor become three-time PGR winner? You know, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that point up right there, Devin. First of all, the answer is yes. And second of all, if we had to make a rank list on some of the most underrated drivers in terms of, at least for PGR Esports in general, but especially for PGR Esports, I think Trevor Osnott has to take the cake, the top of the list. I mean, this guy has done things that people just do not give him enough credit for. When he wants to run up front, he runs up front. He's already got two wins in what is easily the most competitive Money Racing Super Speedway Series on the server. And he's had multiple chances here at number three as well. A couple times things just haven't worked out. Point being, KSR, they're here to play. And Trevor Osnoth might be the third victor. Or excuse me, might get his third victory in a row for that team. Does have some damage though. So I'm not sure if the job's going to get done tonight. We'll see if he's able to bust some more of that front dent out. But nonetheless, here we go. Rolling back up through the gears once we get to the restart zone and i believe by the way these guys actually start might start in first at this track we'll pull up the dashboard and take an onboard view here with kevin freeze for this restart let's see how well him and Garrett mains coordinating second gear restart green flag in the air and these cars take a while to get revved up long gears and so you see that it's taken kevin a while to get all the way from second up to speed to his teammate Garrett mains at least actually it's look like he maybe short shifted just a little bit right there 150 miles an hour by the time they're down into turn number one and only going to get faster from there 200 miles an hour right around there give or take probably three to five miles an hour is the top speed these cars will reach in a draft in just 23 laps to go of course gonna be 22 when they cross the stripe that means we're starting to run out of time if you need to get to the front i mean we still have 36 cars on the lead lap so if you're back in this pack, it might be time to start looking quickly towards the front as now it's Tyler Vickery. First time up front for him here tonight. 24 has got a tall task as he's going to be pushed against one of the best in Kevin Freeze. He looks up to the challenge. J.R. Miller in that line as well. I believe, by the way, Tyler Vickery, one of the new additions to PGR Esports. So that team 
grabbing a very talented young driver in Tyler Vickery, the driver out of Orlando. Again, still looking for his first win over here in PGR Esports. On the inside, though, Kevin Freeze, Garrett Mains rolling. Now Garrett's going to jump to the top. Did it in a little bit of a sketchy area here. Merck going to try to line him up the best he can. Gives him a good push. Ooh, we got one blinking in the middle of the pack. Just in front of the eight right there of Ken McCullough Jr., J.R. Miller. Got a little bit out of shape. Sarah Clampert on the inside. She's in 10th now. Actually breaking into the top 10. And she is up 17 positions in total from where she started this race at. So a great run going so far for the 23 car. There's Ken McCullough Jr. going to jump down just in front of her. Don't forget, if you like what you're seeing here tonight, join us back on PGR Esports tomorrow. That will be for Super Speedway. King's going to see similar fields, similar racing, just different series. One race, race one will be in the trucks, race two will be in the Xfinity cars. So it's going to be another fun one. We see a lot of Coke guys in this series, a lot of Coke guys in that series. Now, another side note, Malik Ray did have a one-week suspension. That actually... Wasn't in place anymore for this week. Served it last week, so he's going to come back any time, but not making not making his way in here tonight. Colin Bowden not out either, so Garrett, the only Coke driver in the field at the moment. Leading the way here as well at Talladega. Hard to say, though, who's on the most laps here tonight. There's been so much trading. It has been absolutely phenomenal. The racing, I think, definitely a lot better than what maybe some people expected. A couple of pre-race predictions that this thing was going to be messy, which, in all fairness, I know we've had three cautions, but when these guys have been at it three wide, it's been a ton of fun to watch. And now Tyler Vickery starting to give a little bit of a surge to that third lane with Andrew Navarro. The 16 is going to try to see if he can get door-to-door -door with the 60 of Merck, maybe even look for a little bit of a side draft here off of two. Nothing doing yet. Up top, a couple more takers. Looks like John Ward is trying to make recovery after being involved in that last wreck. I think is that John Mullahan potentially up there as well? No, I don't think it is actually. I think that might be Nathan Rostical in the 88. Yep, sure enough it is. Rostical with a great run going as well as he is now at 14 positions from where he started. Third on the outside. I better be careful here before I jinx him. So it looks like his internet's coming in and out a little bit. Two wide for the lead, but three wide for second, third, and well, I was going to say fourth, but the 88 has fallen back. Not sure if race control may be communicating to him that the internet not great right now. Back off and collect yourself, but now Dylan Jones that he's got around is going to try to jump back up to the high side here. Looks like this time Matthew Baker is going to follow. That's going to be four really, really strong cars on this third lane, and I think they're going to be getting ready to roll right here. In terms of track temp, you see sim time right there, 145 in the afternoon. Track temp still absolutely scorching, 126 degrees. Calm winds at two miles an hour, but I'm telling you, if we can run, I know it's a pretty big ass, but if we run these next 19 laps clean, I guess I should call it 18, that white flag lap is going to be one of the trickiest and craziest ones that we have seen in some time here at PGR because everybody is going to be on super worn out tires. In fact, I wouldn't even beg to wait that long as Ooh, Davenport coming to the wall further back. 55 with some issues there. I think he finally gets it sorted out, but he does lose some positions in the process. What happened here to the PGR Esports driver? Let's back this up and see. Is there something that gets him out of shape here? Does he just... Oh, no, he's got a little bit of damage here and... Off the turn, just washing up again. Talked about that tire where these cars get tight. And yeah, just gets up. Once he gets in the wall, he has to correct it here for the entirety of the short shoot down to the tri-oval, but he's able to do so and gets that car corrected back on course. I don't think that damage is going to completely knock him out of the draft. Well, I may have spoke too soon. Looks like the 55 has unfortunately lost contact with any of that lead draft. In fact, he's only a second back here, so if he can get a pull, maybe not, but... I think he needs some help from behind, too, and I don't think he's going to get it. Oh, back up front, based out of shape. He's able to save it just in front of his teammate there, Dustin Carruthers. Man, another big moment for the 73. You can tell base is struggling a little bit with the handling so far here tonight. But, you know, it's again, it's a different reaction. When you get loose in the trucks, you put a ton of wheel into it to keep it together. These cars completely different. They are very, very dirty. Those front tires will catch easily, so you got to... Put, I would say, maybe more wheel movement into it, but not as aggressive in terms of you're still going to have to turn the wheel left and right quite a few times, but you don't want to yank it left. You don't want to yank it right. Just work it slowly back to getting centered up and having a chance to get back to the lead. That's what we're going to see right here from Andrew Navarro as he will jump to the lead for the first time here tonight, at least on the inside as the 16 car gets pushed by Kevin Freeze out front. Tyler Vickery trying to help that 92 cool off a little bit. They'll get linked back up in the trioval. And I assume that's what Tyler was doing. He needs to be real careful here because I'm telling you, if he leaves that middle open right there, John Ward will have no problem with taking him four wide. So, again, got to be really, really careful about leaving that third lane open. 
Even when we're three wide, this is Talladega, not Daytona. There is still room to make it a fourth lane. The opportunity presents itself, but for the moment, still nothing doing. 16 laps to go here at Talladega. Going to be 15 when they cross the line. No pit stops expected, at least as of right now. If we get a caution, could certainly be a different story. Garrett with a big run up to the front bumper here of Navarro. Does he oh, Merck with some contact. Could tell if it was off the 78 or a push from the 24. Now Ward's going to split Tyler Vickery four wide as they enter the trioval. Looks like Ward, along with the 31, trying to get low here without any issue. That's Christopher McCullough, and they're going to do so. Vickery will jump back in line, but got the bad end of the stick on that one. And so all of a sudden, up front, back to two by two for the first two, almost three rows. But now Jeff Merck's going to start to fight back. As you see, Navarro is trying to do a lot of lane controlling right now. And it seemed like he was able to get the block up in time. The problem is, I think if Mains chooses to jump out, that kills Navarro's run. And he might find himself getting buried, if not sent to the back. So he's going to have to be really careful. But right now, again, he feels good out in front. And he's probably keeping a close eye on that 60 of Merck, who now he gets out of shape. Back up the track. What a catch from the 60 at that time. As now Navarro's going to jump back up off of turn number four. Back to right on board here with Jeff Merck. As this is a stressful spot to be in. You're on the outside and you're not in the lead. you got to worry, of course, about all the pushing that you're getting from out back, but also about them wrecking from the inside. And if Merck can get clear of that middle, you better believe he is going to jump down. But so far, he just cannot quite do it. Sailing off into turn number one. Again, really close, just not quite enough. How much temp does John Ward have left? in the 92 and is it enough to get the 60 clear should note that everybody is in the same car here tonight for the arca series they only make one manufacturer and that is chevy so while the nose are tricky guess the good part is that everybody has the same nose so don't have to worry about anything being too tough to learn there so we saw garrett with a beautiful up and under or under and up move if you will right there on andrew navarro was able to push him clear jumped down got enough of a push from freeze jumped right back up and now puts himself in control of this race with 13 laps to go Crossing the stripe. Again, 13 laps to go around two point, this 2.65 mile super speedway. The action's only going to continue to pick up. Garrett looked for a block. Man, that was really close. He may have actually had it, but Navarro quickly made him think better of it as now Garrett jumps back up to the middle. That'll put Freeze as the lead push on the bottom. And now Navarro giving Garrett a little bit of a taste of his own medicine. Four wide, Merck got split. This is going to get a little bit interesting here into turn number three, still three wide. Three wide up front, four wide out back. That's the one that we're keeping an eye on. Is now it's the 31 of Christopher McCullough who finds himself in the sucker hole, and it's on the outside. Jeff Merck jumps down, a little bit of door-to-door -door banging. Oh, Freeze gets turned. He's going to try to hold on to it. I think he did. Oh, my goodness. What a save from Kevin Freeze. Oh, maybe not. Now wrecking up front. The seven goes around. Huge hit. Caution is out. Todd Macy gets into it, and that's Nash Brambilla. with a huge hit to the front end of his Chevy Impala. Oh my goodness. She Monte Carlo rather it looks like, but well, I'll tell you what, something had to give and I'm amazed that it was not Kevin Freeze. That was an absolutely ridiculous save. You saw him initially go back to the right and I thought it was uh, kind of over then if you will. I mean, usually when the car's pointed right, it doesn't end too well, but no scrapes on the 48, at least from any angle we can see yet. Again, further implying that he did indeed find a way to hold on. So let's watch this save first here from Kevin Freeze, and then ultimately what leads to the accident further up. Man, this was a phenomenal job. Watch this one, ladies and gentlemen. Not often do you see a save like this in this car. He's on the bottom here. And is Garrett going to try to jump down? Oh, he does. And Garrett, I think, just misjudges it a little bit here. No, he doesn't misjudge the slide in, but he's got to run and just gets to his rear bumper a little bit early, I think. And that turns Kevin right around. But look at this. Back to the right here is where I thought this was going to get really nasty. But then, oh my goodness, Sierra Clampert, you saw her duck low. She thought that the 48 was coming back up. And then she had to make a split second decision as well. But that is just an absolutely ridiculous save here from Kevin Freeze. We're going to go back and look at this one a couple times before we look at the cause of the caution. Watch this from the onboard view. Look at his hands. Oh my goodness, back that up even further here. So go to the gearbox first and then switch to his hands here. I apologize. Wanted to switch. We're going to take a look at that one more time. But, I mean, that shows you everything you need to see in terms of the push from Garrett. And now it had an effect on the situation. Boom. Right there. Hits him. And see, it just starts turning Kevin around. Somehow, some way, he steers out of it. And then talked about Sarah Clampert and the 
really, really close moment that she had. She also drove to this one. Watch this from the cockpit view. Actually, she might get through two right here. So we'll lead this into the next wreck, but watch how she misses the first one. This was the really impressive one. As free starts coming back up, she drops low, realizes he's not, and oh my goodness. I don't know if you could squeeze a piece of paper in there, and then here's the second wreck. Looks like it starts with range, and then you see it going down, collecting Brambilla, and she goes high, misses that one as well. Nice job by Sierra Clampert to miss not only the first one, but of course miss that one as well. Now let's go see the wreck that actually ultimately brought out the caution here between Nash Brambilla and Zach Range. Actually, no, this might have been Ryan Bass. Sorry, take that back. Looks like it is indeed Zach Range here. 73 is in the middle of the racetrack. Looks fine here. We're going to see if we can go to the drone cam here. This might give us a little bit of a better angle. And watch as... Oh! Actually, that is going to be Zach Range. I take it back. Who was on the top? Was he four wide or was he three? No, he was three wide here. I'm not sure if he thought he was clear. Was trying to let Christopher down. I mean, right here. Right here, he is four wide. And then gets shoved up a little bit. And then... Ooh, well, that would... Really give some more insight, and I think I got it wrong again, so I'm going to have to apologize again. That is not Zach Range either. Again, a couple paint schemes that looked similar tonight. It is not Zach Range in the 19. I don't believe. We saw him in the 04 3 earlier, I believe. Actually, we'll have to try to see if we can find out exactly who this was. Seven, we know, was Nash Brambilla involved in this one as innocent bystander, and I think that was Todd Macy who's going to come along and clobber him with nowhere to go, but that's the 19 machine. I certainly don't believe that Zach Range here. Go up and take a bit of a different angle at this one. And no, there you see Zach Range on the outside in the 043. But this happens a bit in front of him. Ooh, I know who this was. I bet this was Matt Lee. Let's see if. Yeah, that's exactly who it was here. And so Matt Lee, as I think he just. I don't want to say he panicked here, but I think. No, he didn't. That's what it is. That bump. Here, hold on. Let me. Back this up. I want to make sure I can give you guys a good view of this so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, watch the 19 here. He's in the middle of four wide. It's already, he's got his hands full. He sees him wrecking, and he's really tight on the 78 of J.R. Miller. Miller washes up just a little bit, gets into the left front of Lee, and as Lee kind of unlatches from his right rear, that's what gets him a little loose down the track into Ryan Based, and then Lee tries to save it initially. Does a good job. Actually, I think Lee does hold on to it. It's going to be based here that ends up going around. And there you see, as Lee somehow does do a Houdini act to drive out of it. Ashburn Villa, not so lucky. And that was Todd Macy, it looks like, as well, with the 88 of Nathan Rostical. Took a couple of really, really big hits right here. Let's look at this from the starter cam. Big, big hit right there for Nash Brambilla. He was just the innocent victim here. Nothing he could do. And, you know, you always worry when you slide through the travel backwards that eventually the momentum's going to switch and it's going to start pulling you back up the racetrack. That's exactly what it did here for Brambilla. And when it does, this thing gets ugly. See, he's got the wheels turned to try to get it back down the track, which it does. Problem is, before it starts to, it's just Todd Macy on rushing with nowhere to go. You see the 88 gets involved as well. Nothing he could do. Everybody was able to drive back to the pits, but ultimately the damage that was done was done, and this could definitely take a few cars out of this one. Boom. 88 tried to shoot the gap on the outside as they see Vicente Guerrero going around. Unfortunately, that gap had closed up. And so with that knowledge, take one more view of this here from the drone cam. Now as we go back live, getting ready for the green flag again as the pace car is off. Andrew Navarro, Jeff Merck, row one. J.R. Miller, John Ward, row two. Matt Lee and Dylan Jones, row number three. Going to be nine laps to go. Green flag back in the air at Talladega. It's a phenomenal restart here from the 16 of Andrew Navarro. He's got a little bit of help here from J.R. Miller, but that's about it. On the outside, though, Jeff Merck, John Ward starting to get their act together. I think this outside is going to roll here down the back. Joining us in the booth for the final nine. Dawson Wise has arrived. Dawson, here we go. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Better than my technology is feeling tonight, apparently. But, hey, I'm here when it matters most. I love these cars. I'm sure they provided a great race. They're providing a good race up front. Man, 
Jeff Merck does what I didn't think anybody was going to be able to do, and that's hook across the lanes in these cars, but he makes it work, and now allows John Ward to lead the top, and how, how quick do we see that third line? I see Vicente Guerrero back there. That's who I'm looking at to lead the third line. Yeah, especially because I see Cody Nagel's a little bit packed there as well, but it's actually Brock Westmill in the 15 who makes the first move. He's got some help here from John Herta up front, two by two, and you noted the lane switching. Yeah, we saw that be careful treading early, but now that some guys have figured it out, looks like the rumor is starting to spread. Here goes the 19. We saw him involved in the last accident, but Matt Lee, he wants to go to the front. Question is, will Vicente Guerrero go with him? Dead even with row number three off of turn number two. Yeah, and I got personal experience that when you had that 14 behind you, he's a heck of a pusher, and he's going to be behind Matt Lee by the time they get to the end of the Alabama Gang Super Stretch. But the middle is the line to be in. Watch out for that top line. They're going to be tandem, and they're already coming to the front. Look at the push he's given to Matt Lee up top, and all of a sudden they've drawn a crowd up there. Seven cars have gone on the top side. I think I see Kevin Freeze coming back to the front further back. Almost a little bit of contact there. Garrett, is that Garrett Maines in the one, and possibly the 39 as well. Up front, how about Jeff Murky? Lane switches back to the middle and goes to the lead in the trial ball. Well, you just saw there with the lane switch how close it was. Dawson, I don't think these guys are going to let that keep happening. I mean, we talked about it. This isn't the truck. Oh, wreck it out back. Oh, big one here. Oh, my goodness. Huge hit. Garrett Maines almost upside down. Matthew Baker's involved. We got more hitting hard here. This is the big one here in turn number one. Yeah, I barely saw it out of the corner of my eye. The 39, the first car I saw get sideways. Uh, I'm not I have yet to figure out who, which car that is, but that was the first car I saw get around. Man, it piled up big from there. Yeah, it certainly did. I believe that was might have been Danny Eshelman here. Let's go back and break this one down for you. But, you know, I wonder, well, before I say anything, I wonder if this was the point that I was just getting ready to talk about. Uh, it doesn't look like it is here. I think this is going to be a move potentially gone wrong here for Matthew Baker and Dustin Carruthers. As here we go. Watch it from the chop review. We're starting to come down to the end of this race. There's a lot of money on the line, and if three lanes aren't enough, talked about there's a possibility to do four here. And you see Baker, he's got to run. He sees Cody kind of hanging between the lanes. And, well, I, you know, I don't know, Dawson. I mean, we see fire out of the pipes of Baker there. I, I almost think maybe that move wasn't planned. Maybe the checkup was just a little bit greater than he expected it to be as he got there. And then I think when he kind of tries to bail to the outside here, well, Carruthers kind of follows him up. That was a really, really odd look there. Like I said, it certainly didn't look like Baker was trying to hit him. It looked like, in fact, he was trying to get off of him. But, oh, I bet it I bet it was when he, yeah, I think that's what it is. He's, he just barely taps his left rear. I mean, barely. We'll see if we can get a view from the nose cam. But that slight contact, I think, is what ultimately turns Carruthers up that slight bit to allow them to make more contact. And then I think the wreck's on from there. So here we go. We're going to go to the left front here of Matthew Baker. And watch. It's just really, really subtle. But there it is. That little bit of contact sends him up just enough, and it ends up being more contact. And then at this point, Carruthers saves it. Problem is that Baker and Danny Eshelman get together, and now from here, Dawson, I mean, this one's hard to break down in terms of individuality because it collected a whole bunch of them. Yeah, when well, that's what happens in these cars. These cars are very hard to get slowed down, very hard to move quickly. And when you're going this fast, when you're in this tight a pack, it's very hard. Um, to get away from a wreck and I went on board with Baker and to me it's a combo I mean he does get in the right rear of Dustin Carruthers there and I think that does send him up a little bit but also the contact in these cars is so different from what we're used to you can lift a guy off the ground and as such Baker I think maybe just over corrects just a little trying to stay off Carruthers and when he does it shoots him up into uh, Danny Esselman and man it, you're right it is on from there I think it's better to count the cars that didn't get involved in that one yeah, and I'm looking here. We had almost three different cars that went upside down at one point, but they all were able to stay on all four just before they did. Garrett Maines being the first of those. There's the 48 getting tagged big time. That's Kevin Freeze who was having a heck of a night. Him and Garrett both. So, you know, most wrecks we've seen tonight, Dawson, it's taken out a few, but this one did more than take out a few. It took out a lot, and it took out quite a bit of the big hitters as well. So that translated quite a bit to the up front. Sarah Clamford, I could saw it a little bit. Cody Nagels, I think, made it through this one mostly unscathed. I was looking to see if I saw really anybody else, and I don't. I mean, that took out just about everybody else in the pack. As, yeah, no, really, nobody makes it through that. 41 of Christopher Carter, I think, ducks low and gets around this. But after that, certainly the big one here at Talladega with under 10 to go. And now we're starting to get into what... You know, I feel like we see most weeks, Dawson, which is those late race restarts and the chaos just is going to get even more and further from here. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And these cars, actually, it's it's kind of funny. I get to race these cars sometimes, and I actually, you know, I, I get to see these cars raced before this race started. Um, I, I get to see these cars every week when I when I go and broadcast our, our throwback series that I do. Um, I get to see these cars a lot, and ironically, uh, the guy running six, Vicente Guerrero, is a common a common member of that series. He actually runs quite a bit. Um, so if anybody knows the chaos of these cars, it would be him. Um, but you're right, not racing these cars a lot, not having a ton of experience, and with just how hard they are to drive, how hard they are to wheel. I mean, yeah, only only more chaos from here. Granted, the chaos is not going to involve many cars, if you can uh, see back there. Only about, what, 18 cars left in the field at this point? Yeah, no fast repairs definitely reduced the uh, life, we'll call it the life expectancy for most of these cars here tonight. And there's not that many running without at least a scratch on the car at the moment. Two of them, though, that are. Is that 16 of Andrew Navarro and the 60 of Jeff Merck, which are lining up here for the front row? Back in row number two here, it's going to be the 19 and the 92. That is Matt Lee and John Ward. J.R. Miller rounding out your top five. Vicente Guerrero, who you just talked about, currently back in sixth, down five spots. That's because he qualified pole, if that gives you some insight on to how good he is here. Dylan Jones, seventh. Cody Nagels, eighth. Christopher McCullough, ninth. And Zach Range going to be rounding out your top ten. Well, before we get to this restart, again, it's going to be three to go. It's going to be chaotic. I think this is a good chance to go talk about what payouts are looking like here tonight. Based off 45, I believe we got 40 or 41, so it's going to be pretty close. $17 entry, first place 150, second 135, third 120, fourth 125th, 100, and sixth in 30, or excuse me, sixth place $35. So good payouts here tonight, and of course next week, Dawson, going to return to a little bit more of the regularly scheduled programming. So, you know, get a special win while you can tonight. Somebody that did come to mind that they mentioned earlier, who I know is out of it now, is somebody like Trevor Osronoth, who seems to have a thing for winning in some of the special races that we do for PGR instead of just the bread and butter series, such as the trucks. But, I mean, at this point, I could see this going anyway for anybody in the top five. I could, too. Um, and, and you say usual programming. Now, I know next week is not necessarily usual, but I, I see what you mean. And, yeah, it could go any any which way. These guys aren't really used to it besides, you know, a guy like Guerrero who runs these cars a lot more than some of these other guys on track do. Um, so other than that, yeah, not a lot of experience. This could go any number of ways with only three laps to go. Matt Lee giving John Ward maybe a little friendly reminder there. I'm not sure what that was all about, but nonetheless, as we do get ready to go back green, Julie Paul says, is Nash number seven or number three? Screen says 37. That's actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Julie. So what happens, especially it, it happens a little bit more common when we run in these cars, is iRacing gives you an assigned number, which you can, of course, include in your paint scheme. However, a lot of these guys make a custom number. Let's say we'll use Matthew Baker, for example. He let, Or Nash Vermilla will even use, let's say he wants to run the 23. Well, the problem is that if somebody else that also is running the 23 gets in the session before him, iRacing will give them that number. And so while his number still shows up on the car, it's going to show up different on the scoring tower. So... That's why we have that, but nonetheless, the names are still correct in terms of the position they're running. And here we go. Jeff Merck, Andrew Navarro back into the restart zone. Three laps to go at Talladega. Green flag back in the air. Both lines stack up pretty good. One car already out of line, looking three wide further back. Oh, that's going to be really interesting to see how that's called. I'm not sure if you're uh, able to go up there now. Oh, he's going to finish. Oh, but he's going to cause a wreck. That's the eight of Ken McCullough Jr. and a couple others. Like Mike Davenport, Ryan Based. Not sure if he got any damage or snuck through. Mark Vondell still torn up. Again, not sure if that was from this wreck or the past one. Well, tell you what, Dawson. I think these guys felt like it wouldn't be right to end it under a natural green-white checkered plus one. We got to do this the usual way and go to an actual green-white checkered. So we'll try this again. But before we do that, let's go back and look at this one here. Again, it started in the back. You noted up front that was Christopher Carter in the 41 who jumped out as a little bit of a cause of that checkup. But... I mean, further back, I didn't think there was any sort of major checkup right here. Play at full speed for you. And again, this starts with the 8, or around the 8, rather, of Ken McCullough Jr. And I, there, there's got to be a stack up. I mean, you see Matthew Baker times the restart good, gets a jump to the outside he goes. And, well, actually, that wasn't so much Ken's doing as that was the 55 of Mike Davenport trying to split a gap on the 39. That and I just don't know if that was... Well, the gap may have been there. It does certainly look like the 39, who I believe, by the way, that's Danny Eshman. Yeah, it is. I think he did move up a little bit right as Mike Davenport made that move. Now, in terms of if I think that's a high high percentage move, I don't know. You're in the back, and the gaps are pretty big. So at this point, going third isn't going to get you very far if anywhere. And I know Davenport's got some damage as well, but, you know, it's late in the race. Everybody's going for it, and here we go. Watch this from a different angle. So Davenport looks up, and... 
Oh well, no, Danny never really moves. I mean, you see Davenport once he gets there realizes that it's a little close, so he goes a little bit higher. And for a second, I guess he's got the lane, but then the aid of Ken McCullough Jr. I think is maybe trying to go for the same lane. I mean, that's just kind of a case of everybody going for it at the end. I got to believe Dawson. Yeah, I would agree. It's just a case of, you know, desperation at this point in the race. And especially in these cars, it takes a lot longer to get the run built up and get the energy built up uh, than some of the other cars we see. So you got to go and you got to go early on these late restarts. And unfortunately, right there, uh, you can see what happens when all those guys back there are in the same desperation mode late in the race. Give you one more view of this one before we go back up front. There's Ken McCullough Jr. getting turned around. He gets down into Danny Esselman. This works out better for them. I mean, I know they still got damage, but not as bad as it was going to be if they would have got shot back up towards the outside wall like Mike Davenport did into Mark Von Dell. So this one, again, going to collect a couple. I don't think it'll take any four of those guys out of this race, but certainly going to kind of hinder their chances of what was already going to be a tough task to get back to the front. Speaking of the front, Jeff Merck, Andrew Navarro still leading. No change off of that quick restart that we had. The 19 of Matt Lee is back in third. John Ward in fourth, Jared Miller back in fifth, Vicente Guerrero sixth, Cody Nagels in seventh, Dylan Jones eighth, Christopher McCullough ninth, and Christopher Carter currently rounding out your top ten. Well, I'll tell you what, Dawson, you know, three overtimes in these cars, I don't know, man. This thing's getting really wild at the end, I think, and I, I'm going to make this prediction now because I'm really curious to see if it works out this way. We're going to see a block gone wrong because I talked about it earlier. These aren't the trucks of the Xfinity cars. If you slide up and you're late, it's not just going to be a big push. Again, that front bumper on these cars acts as a wedge. So you're going to get wedged up in the air, and you're probably going to lose it. And I think as a driver, you got to keep that in mind tonight. I know everybody wants to win, but you got to stay smart if you want to finish in the money. Yeah, I mean, the, the blocking is so hard to do in these cars. It's almost impossible, really. And I agree. I think you'll see it from one of these guys that maybe doesn't run this car as much, doesn't realize that that's what's going to happen. You can get a tap, especially if you offset left in these cars. If you're off on the left side of their bumper, you can almost keep them grounded. Um, it's it's kind of interesting how that works in these cars, the way they can push. But if you're not on the left and if you hit them hard enough, yeah, it's going to wedge them up in the air uh, and get them spun around because the rear tires come up off the ground. So I agree. I think we're going to see a block gone wrong. I don't know where it's going to come from, uh, but I would not doubt that we see it before the end of this race. All right, lining up again. Let's remind you of the rules real quick here for a green-white checker. Two-lap shootout to decide your winner. Got to make it to the white flag for this race to be official. If we do, then no more cautions. If these guys all pile up after that, so be it. However, if we get that caution at any time in that first lap, we can rack them up and try it again. We got three total attempts at that. Hoping we're only going to need one right here. And Dawson, I know you've touched on this a couple times, but... I mean, I'm seeing it now. There's not many untouched cars left in the field. A lot of guys with damage. And in fact, I mean, you see the 2x2 two two only goes back to about Zach range. So anybody that's in that single file line, I just don't know if there's enough time to get to the front from that far back with how long these cars take to charge up. I think this is all going to come down to a battle between your top five, maybe some of the guys back fifth through tenth as well. Uh, I would naturally agree. Now, I will say with the amount of damaged cars we have up here at the front, I would say if you have a clean car and you're, you know, 15th through 20th in the in the field, I would say you're not out of it, certainly, if a wreck happens up front or if you can get a group together, if you can get really closely hooked up here by the time we get off turn two, once you get a run, uh, they can be very big in these cars. If you have three guys that know what they're doing, that know how to push, uh, you can get a very big run. Now, it does take a little bit to get that run, but once you get it, I mean, you can fly in these cars in excess of 200 miles an hour. So we'll see what these guys can do further back. Well, now the 2x2 two two extends about, what, 10 rows deep. So perhaps some more guys involved in this go back six, seven, eight rows in the field. Yeah, that definitely shuffles things up a little bit more. But you mentioned those big runs, Dawson, and that's exactly where I mentioned the whole thing of blocking here. I know we can get away with it in the other cars. I just don't see it happening tonight. So... You know, we'll see if anybody does it. One of the other things we've seen, especially early on in these restarts, with that hot track temp, every lane's had a shot. And I think the bottom's definitely been the safest. It has cooled down just a little bit now at 123 instead of 126, but not enough to really make much of a difference. We're going to see what happens here. Matt Lee, this will believe be his first time as a lead pusher here tonight on Jeff Merck on the inside. And, you know, I, I mean, i got to assume if you're Merck at this point, there's no thought of jumping up, right? I mean, you got to stay on the bottom. 
I would think so. I think that's the smartest bet. You've got a great pusher behind you in Matt Lee. I think you just hedge your bet on the bottom. If you come off the bottom at all, you're either going to get split three wide or you're going to leave opportunity for uh, for Navarro or John Ward or somebody to jump out of line. I would just probably park and trust the help behind you. Who is willing to risk it all? And who are we going to see in victory lane here tonight? Again, first time in the Arkham and Art Series here for PGR Esports. It's been a fun race so far. Somebody looking to engrave their name in PGR history with the first win of this series. Here we go. Jeff Merck on the inside. Andrew Navarro on the outside. Green flag in the air. Two laps to go at Talladega. And it's a great restart for both lanes. First one we've seen like that tonight. Problem is the outside rolling better than the inside. Matt Lee not to the bumper of Jeff Merck yet. I think his saving grace is going to be that they're going to hit the banking here before Navarro gets clear. That's going to allow Merck to pull up a little bit here, shorter way around the racetrack. Down the back, though, this is going to come down to a battle of willpower. Who has the better push? Well, they got to be careful. They're getting awfully close. They're in the exit of turn number two. They're getting really close to the car in front of them. You got to be careful to keep those wheels on the ground, the guy in front of you, or it will unleash chaos here at the front of the field. Dead, even, drag race down the back straight away. Who's going to be the first to jump out? I believe it's the 15 further back of Brock Westerland. Nobody goes with him. I right, look row three, row four for the first to jump out of line, but nobody yet. Merck and Navarro continue to drag race off four. Yeah, way back. They've got that third lane going. I just don't know if there's enough time, especially for Brock Westmoreland. Meanwhile, up front, still two by two, and everybody's staying patient. It's getting, oh, Nagel gets turned. Trying to hold on to it, not going to. Caution is out. We'll rack up and try it again as they're wrecking big time across. Oh, my goodness, the 26. John Mullahan up and over he goes. Back on all fours. I don't think he ever even thought about lifting off the gas right there. I'll tell you what, Dawson. I think that maybe a couple people were confused about the caution coming out. It was so close to the line there. I think some people were, you know, just focused and maybe didn't even realize that the caution came out. Thought we took the white flag. That's why we saw so many people piling in right there. But, boy, they were close. And take a guess at what it was, Dawson. I think I mentioned this once. And I think that's exactly what it was here. But we got to go back and take a look first. I did see Nagels hop up and then almost on cue right as he hopped up is when we saw the contact. But if he was clear, he may not necessarily just be able to put it on him. So here we go. Let's go back and watch this from the chopper view. And you see that's Christopher Carter behind him. Well, let's watch this whole move kind of develop first in full speed. And then we'll slow things down for you a little bit. So Cody was on the inside. He knows he's got to get up to have a chance. He's got a teammate there, Vicente Guerrero, just a couple rows up. And so the gap's there. He takes it. But, well, you know, that, that's that's a really tough one, Dawson. I think, I think this is one of those ones that can kind of go either way in terms of the rule of, you know, if you jump up there this late in the race, the guys behind you, they're not lifting. So... You got to be able to make the push. But at the same time, the gap was there. Cody's definitely clear. He gets in that spot. And then Carter here gets him in the back, which, you know, again, maybe, maybe they hang on to this on the straightaway. But in the trial, there's just no way. I think it lifts the rear wheels up for the six and then wrecks on from there. Yeah, again, in basically any other car, I think the move is probably fair. And I think, you know, there's plenty of gap there for Nagels to get into it. The problem is you're in a car that is very very uh, heavy very hard to slow down and very you know hard to react to stuff like that that happens so quick and unfortunately carter is just not able to react in time cody that was a really quick move i mean it was a snap move to get up and it was it was there uh, i'll respect that but the problem is to, to check up for that is awfully hard it gets nagel sideways and it is off from there man they wreck big time at the exit of the trial this is a huge wreck well speaking of checking up here the onboard from Mullahan, and he never did check up. So that's your answer to that. It almost worked. He almost split through all the gaps. You know, you know, two laps to go again, borderline one to go. I think this was, you know, guys just knowing that they've got to be able to shoot through this to have a chance. And like I said, it was a heck of an effort here from Mullahan. He actually missed every single car until the last one, which was William Ransone. And, in fact, I talked about him not checking up. He was not alone. There were multiple others that did the same down low. But well, once he tags the 17, he goes into the wall hard. That's a huge hit. For John Mullahan destroys that car, and that will most definitely bring his night to an end, as it did for multiple others. And now we're going to be heading into our second overtime here, Dawson. Now, you start to ask yourself, or rather as a driver, maybe you start to consider that this thing could go into three overtimes. And when that becomes the case, you got to really start fighting for any track position that you can get. Yeah, I mean, now granted, uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, submit here that there are not a ton of cars left without damage. So, I mean, if you if you don't have track position now, you're gonna have to pass a lot of damaged cars to get it. There's actually not even a lot of cars left. I mean, if we're honest, uh, if we're going looking back, uh, 
I believe there's, what, 19, 20 on the lead lap, and not all of them are free of damage. Kevin Freese, Danny Eshelman, Kenny McCullough, Matthew Baker, Trevor Osronoth all have damage, and a few of these cars up front do as well. Um, so I think if you're going to have the track position to win the race, you, you probably already do uh, in terms of who is left and who is left unscathed here at the front of the field. Yeah, by the way, Garrett Maines did make it through that last wreck. Caught my eyes. He shot the gap on the inside and was able to do that. Now, you know, you know, I know we're poking fun at it and all, but you talk about no cars, and of course, that changes things up. That's going to take some of the energy out of the pack, especially with this many damaged cars. But we've seen last lap wrecks quite a few times, Dawson, so you know, you got to get back out here, even if you have some damage. If the car runs and you're on the lead lap for a two lap shootout, you've got a chance to win it. I don't care what anybody says, but it's definitely going to come down here, I think, to who can do the better job pushing. Now, the big question here Matt Lee Navarro, not current teammates, but they've worked together a lot in the past. I don't know if Matt Lee steps out. However, I think there's maybe a shot that J.R. Miller, John Herta potentially does. And if neither of those two do, well, you know Zach Range would like to. I just think he's got too much damage. Maybe watch for the 24. But a shout-out to the 98 of Jimmy Emos. He's up to the 15th spot, up 25 from where he started. And you see a couple of the heavy hitters there in Kevin Freeze, Matthew Baker. I think they may be considering three wide here pretty quickly as well. 39 to Eshelman, just in front of, or just behind him, rather, his teammate, Kenny McCullough Jr., Trevor Osnoth on the outside looks like he's actually fixed up all of his damage now. So I don't know, Dawson. It's interestingly enough, it looks like the cars that came out now, most of them, which had a little damage before this, seem to be pretty cleaned up. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cars now that are towards the tail end that are clean again for the most part, but again, it, it doesn't leave still a ton of cars. I mean, it's still only about 18, 19, and that counts. Cars like Kevin Freeze, cars like Dustin Carruthers, cars like Matthew Baker and Trevor Osmond that have just kind of had the opportunity to fix damage and get back up uh, and out here. Uh, but then you have cars like Zach Range. If you look back there at the 043, uh, considerable front-end damage to the uh, Mountain Dew Dodge um, back there in 10th position so all kinds of mix of damage here in about the front 19 cars all, all sorts of conditions on these cars absolutely all right well here we go pace car making its way off a of turn four potentially for the final time again we do have one more chance at a third green white checkered here if these guys wreck on this one boy they got really close last time i think they're gonna be able to get it done right here but it's gonna all come down to a battle of again those pushes and we just saw the last wreck be a push gone wrong don't be surprised if the next one we see is more of the same I think these front four, though, are going to have a pretty good shot at getting either of their guys win, whether it be Jeff Merck or Navarro. And then, of course, you ask yourself who's going to be the man that jumps out three wide and who goes with them. All right, here we go. Feel in the hands of Merck and Navarro working their way through the tribal into the restart zone. Flagman has the green flag in hand, looking to wave it for potentially the final time. Green flag back in the air. Two laps to go at Talladega. Really good start from the outside. You see Zach Range jump out of line. That's going to create a bit of a gap here from the bottom of the middle. I believe Garrett Maines jumps up into the middle lane. Watch out for the one here on this race start. He's only five rows back of the leaders. He's going to be looking here off turn number two to make something happen, but he's going to need some cars to go with him. And I don't know if he's going to have much help or much energy up there by the time he gets to the third lane. Off of two, still all Merck and Navarro up front. Look at the, the run the middle line has down the back stretch. I think that was a really good decision by Range to get out of the way right there. That car was not firing off the way maybe he thought it was going to. And as he fades out back, everybody up front still charging. Out in front, though, it is going to be Jeff Merck through three and four. Navarro looking to build up another run. Dawson, we talked about it. Can't push in the corners, but how much risk are these guys willing to take off of four? This will be coming to the white flag if we can make it. Merck still on the bottom of the push from John Ward. Out of 16, starts to surge back up top. No third lane just yet. White flag in the air. One lap to go at Talladega. A couple of things going to go into this last lap. Number one, who has the better push? Number two, does anything happen here in terms of chaos on this last lap? And number three, does anybody look to the third lane? Better push right now. Give the advantage to the bottom and John Ward. But Matt Lee certainly has been good. Now the third line starts to roll. It's J.R. Miller. He's going to have Garrett Maines coming to him, but they may not have enough time, and they may have just killed any chance at the middle through three and four to win this race. Jeff Merck, can he finally get to PGR victory lane? Well, don't count out John Ward. He's going to get clear here. Navarro, maybe. No, he's got to take it now if he wants it. The 92 is going to jump up. Merck, does he look for a block? Off of four for the final time. He doesn't. Tucks back down. Ward with a huge shove from Andrew Navarro. Wreck it out back. It'll come all the way down to a drag race. Merck versus Ward to the start finish line. Who is going to get it? It goes to John Ward in the 92. What a finish. Tax on another win. A hundredth of a second. I'm showing even less than that. What a finish. 
And that right there is why I love these cars so much. They can give us such electric racing, and they give us a great finish right there. They did. I'll tell you what that reminded me of, Dawson, was uh, was it Mark Martin and Kevin Harvick back in Daytona yes. where the whole field wrecks out back, and, oh, man, it came down to a classic two-car mix at the end. Well, here we go. This is going to be a case of, well, Ken, pushing gone wrong. We knew it was probably going to happen at some point here in this last lap, and, I mean, this shows you pretty much everything you need to know. Watch from the chopper view. Dylan's trying to help the inside here, so he gives a push, but that third car pushing is now pushing that second car into the first car, and it just turns Vicente right around. He gets into the 16 of R, who somehow saves it right here. But then you see they're all wrecking on the bottom. J.R. Miller's going to slightly touch the rear bumper of Andrew Navarro. That kills all his momentum as they continue to wreck out back. There goes Garrett Maines. The 26 is involved. And then all the way down to the checker. Now, I will say, right at the end there, the 92 got a little bit of help in terms of at least arrow push-wise from Andrew Navarro. I got to think that was maybe just what he needed. But man, oh man, what a finish that was. We'll get the official margin here when we look at our final results, but I think John Ward's going to be a pretty happy man after that one. Oh, he's got to be after winning a race like that, the kind of attrition race that this ended up being. I mean, he's he got to be feeling pretty good about getting that victory. Picture perfect move off turn four, by the way, and then gets a little bit of help from Navarro, all the help he needs to get to victory lane. And there's the photo finish cam. You see the distance there. Well, a little bit more than what we thought the initial gap was, but definitely too close to call, at least from terms of the view we had. It is indeed, though, John Ward that scores the victory here tonight. And so as we go back live, see if he's burning it down. Looks like whatever celebrations he was doing, he has finished up for the moment. So that gives us a chance to bring up your results here tonight. John Ward, of course, officially your winner here tonight. Jeff Merck brings home second in that photo finish. An official gap at the line was, looks like, just under two hundredths of a second, so still a really close finish at that. As Andrew Navarro brings home the last podium spot, Garrett Maines fourth, Tyler Vickery good run for him tonight. He'll cash in fifth, and it's Brock Westmoreland rounding out the money spots tonight. He finishes in sixth. Joe Herta back in seventh, Dylan Jones in eighth, Matthew Baker in ninth, and Tony Cox rounding out your top ten. Matt Lee finishes 11th. Vicente Guerrero finishes 12th. Kenny McCullough finishes 13th. J.R. Miller in 14th. Tucker McClendon finishes in 15th. Nathan Ross is still in 16th. Chad Ross, 17th. Todd Mays, 18th. Cody Nagel's in 19th. And Trevor Osmanoff rounds out the top 20. Jimmy Emos finishes 21st. Sierra Clampert in 22nd. Nash Brambilla, or excuse me, Sierra Clampert 23rd. Mike Davenport was 22nd. Nash Brambilla 24th. Kevin Freeze in 25th. Logan York back in 26th. Zach Rains, 27th. Ryan Based in 28th. And Ryan, I got your top 30 tonight. Jason Maines and Christopher Carter. Danny Eshelman, 31st. Dustin Carruthers, 32nd. David Drohan, 33rd. William Ransone in 34th. John Mullahan, 35th. Chris McCullough, 36th. Mark Von Dell, 37th. Ron Morris, 38th. Mark Matt, 39th. Kenny Stamper, 40th. And David Sheets rounds out the 41 car field. Michael Triscaro, of course, race control here tonight, so he was not scored, but with... Your results wrapped up. We're going to go get your top three in here for post-race interviews. Stick with us. We'll be right back at Talladega. All right, back live at Talladega Super Speedway. Going to start first tonight with your third-place finisher. Andrew Navarro, Dawson Wise, stands by with him. Yeah, hey, Andrew, it's Dawson and Austin up in the booth. You get a copy? Yeah. Well, a fun finish there, a war of attrition up front. You know, a little bit different car tonight, so take us through, you know, the differences in the racing that you felt up front, um, and especially in that last run of the finish. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was – I think it's – was really fun. Um, I really like the fact that you can't like team control, uh, which is really nice. You could kind of make your own moves. Um, and there was a little bit of a driving aspect in the first run, but once everybody figured it out, everybody was, you know, fine with the way it was driving. So uh, just uh, hoping not to get turned there. These cars are a little weird when you push somebody. Um, I wasn't completely comfortable with pushing anybody until about midway through the race. And, it got better and better and better. So, you know, just happy to uh, come away with a third place finish and not have died in the trial there. And I was going to ask you, you know, we almost see you get turned in the trial. You get a shot to decide which one, which person to push. Did you have any thoughts of going three wide there in the trial or were you just trying to avoid the wreck? Didn't have enough time to, to, to kind of make that decision. 
Uh, yeah, I really didn't have enough time. Once I got hit, I was just happy to be alive. And then my best shot of, you know, getting second would have been just pushing Ward there because he was already ahead. So um, I stayed behind him. And uh, I'm happy to get third place finished. I just watched back the replay. I got hit pretty hard. I don't know how I didn't wreck, but it definitely knocked the wheel out of my hand. So I'm just happy to get out you know, alive. Well, you do get out alive and you get out with a third place finish nonetheless here tonight in Talladega. So before we let you go and celebrate a little bit, is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out? Yeah, I'd like to thank Seven Seas uh, Events, uh, Celebrity Cruises, um, Premier Racing Setups, uh, Martin Sports, everybody at uh, Premier. Uh, you guys for broadcasting and uh, Michael for putting on the race. Well, thanks for talking to us for a second. Congratulations on the third place finish. Go enjoy it. Go celebrate and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. We'll move on now to our second place finisher here tonight. Jeff Merck in the 60. Merck, it's the boys in the booth. You get a copy. I do. Well, I got to imagine it's a little bit frustrating to come home one spot short of victory, but nonetheless, a second place finish for you here tonight. And look, uh, we, we've seen you have a, a bit of a bad luck spell tonight. Really ran up front for, for all that I saw of the race and, and you know, end up with a really great finish. It's a strong run for you. Take us through your night here at Talladega. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I was going to say was, you know, I was up front all night. I was competitive all night. Um, I knew when we got way out, on the bottom, me and Ward, like when Ward was cleared by two or three car lengths, I knew I was probably in trouble because I knew when the second line got the run, they were going to get to him first and he was going to pull up in front of them, which is what happened. So, and if I pull up and Ward's on the bottom, he's going to go by me on the inside. So either way, I was second. The best thing I could really do was just side draft him as hard as I could coming to the line, but he had Navarro behind him. So it was pretty much a done deal. Well, we've seen you excel in the Xfinity car through Tuesday nights and then the Thursday nights, obviously, that we've run that car here in, in PGR. And we see you now excel in the, the first time the ARCA Gen 4 car comes out um, in this series. You know, what do you like so much about these types of cars uh, that makes you run up front be so competitive in these races? I think it's just the, the, the runs you get. You know, it's a little more instead of you have to rely so much on the guy behind you in the trucks. You know, you got to, you know, it's just constant. You know, you get stuck in the middle of the trucks. You can't go nowhere. These cars are a little more, you can side draft. You can do a lot of things in the cars that you can't do in the trucks. So they're a lot more technical, I think, than they are the trucks. The trucks are just like big bricks that you just beat on the car in front of you and hope you get pushed to the front. So that's kind of, I don't know. I just like the cars a lot better. Oh, no, well said. And as you come away with a second-place finish tonight, before we let you go and celebrate it a little bit here, is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out? Uh, yeah, my loving wife inside. Uh, she's watching the broadcast. Uh, January, February, March. April is uh, Autism Awareness Month, so I want to give a big shout-out to my son, Colby. Uh, I love you, buddy. Uh, he's, uh, he's on the spectrum, so... Uh, April is always a big thing for my family. Uh, my teammate, Baker... Uh, he helped me a lot tonight. Uh, uh, POWMIA is the pain I got on, so all of our veterans, uh, thanks for your service. And uh, you guys up in the booth. Oh, well, thanks for talking to us for a second. Congratulations on a great run tonight, a competitive run for you in second position. Go enjoy it. Go celebrate, and we will talk to you soon. All right, guys. Thanks. All right, and now that's going to bring us to your winner here on the night. Not the first win, but the first one in a little while here for John Ward. John, this is Austin and Dawson in the booth. You got a copy. I do. Well, you grabbed the win here tonight in a photo finish, two hundredths of a second, the gap that you beat Jeff Merck by. But, man, what a race that was the last two laps. What was going through your mind that last lap and when you saw them all piling up in your rear view in the trial? Yeah, um, my last – I I just wanted to finish in the money there in the last couple laps. I knew a bunch of them was damaged back there and uh, just uh, hoping to finish up there in the money. That's all. Well, you do one better. You finish in the money, and, of course, you get the win. Now, you know, different car here tonight, not what we're used to seeing with the trucks. And I think if we ask the majority of the field, they would say this is a car that kind of requires a little bit more of that veteran experience, a little bit harder to drive, drives a lot different than any other car. How do you think that kind of helped you here tonight, already being a multi-time winner in PGR? Yeah, yeah, they're right. It, it helps. You got to know how to drive these cars. You can't push. You can't shove in the turns. You got to be real easy when you get to them. You know, you got to really know how to drive them. It's it's a lot different than the trucks. And and I've been driving these things for a long time, and I really like them. And I was excited that they um put them on for for tonight. 
and it was a it was a great a great showing. Certainly was showing up and showing out for the ninety two. Well, now that you've captured another win, you're tonight at Talladega in the ARCA cars. How you feel about your chances next week to maybe go back to back? Yeah, yeah. Um, I ain't been running too much. It's been a long time since I've been in victory lane in, in a PGR race. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to next week. And I'm going to try to do a back-to-back -back if I can. I'm going to try to get in Jimmy's races. I ain't been running then. I'm going to try to get in that one tomorrow night and uh, see if we can't do some more winning. Forgot the bonus. wonder if that's potentially still being offered. Well, I'll tell you what, before we let you head out and celebrate tonight's win, is there anyone you'd like to thank or shout out? Yeah, I want to thank you and uh, PGR Esports for uh, broadcasting this. It's always a good event, the biggest event of the week. And um, Heath Job, he spotted for me tonight. Uh, I think he helped me out a lot, especially with what was going on in the four wide and stuff. And um, just uh, my team and everybody that did a race tonight. I had fun. Well, congrats again on the win, and thank you for talking to us. We'll see if you can get the job done again next week. You got it. All right, that's John Ward, and that'll wrap up our post-race coverage. Just about a couple things to note here before we go. First off, Dawson, I mean, I think Navarro said it right. It just took these guys a little bit of time to figure it out. Once they did, the racing was fantastic, and I really did like watching these cars here tonight. I wasn't sure how I felt about it, same way the drivers were, but after seeing it, especially seeing that finish, I'm excited that we got a chance to run these, and hopefully we can see them again in the future. Yeah, another car I love. Again, a car I get to see, you know, every Thursday night. Now, I get, I get to see them on a lot of different tracks in this, but I've seen them run Talladega before. I've seen them run Daytona before, um, and, and those guys put on a heck of a show, so I knew that the best of the best in money racing were absolutely going to put on um, a whale of a show, and they certainly did that um, and ended with a really great finish. Uh, and, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I love these cars. I, I was actually hoping to race tonight. Um, hopefully I'll get to uh, here pretty soon in the future when these cars come back around because I love them too. Yeah, then we got the next gens coming up to Gen 6. I might have to race one of those myself. But nonetheless, that's going to wrap up our coverage here tonight from Talladega. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I hope you enjoyed. That'll do it for me, Austin Green and Dawson Wise, here on PGR Esports. Until next time, have a good night.